Happy Week 12, Queens! I'm Daniela Atkinson, and here are your final stories of the semester. This Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Queen's Television is hosting a hot chocolate sale in the Ark. For $5, you can get a hot chocolate gift jar to keep for yourself or give to someone special this holiday season. Our first story today has to do with the Student Choice Initiative and opt-out fees. This past Thursday, the Student Choice Initiative was voted down by the Divisional Court of Ontario. The SCI, which was implemented this past September by the Ford government, allowed students the option to opt out of fees that funded university clubs and services. Student organizations across the province, such as student unions, newspapers, radio stations, food banks, clubs, and LGBTQ support centers have been forced to let go of staff due to the decrease in funding. Queen's Legal Aid, Work Study Program, and the Sexual Assault Center have all been majorly affected by the cuts. In May, after the plans to implement the SCI were announced, the Canadian Federation of Students and the York Federation of Students filed a legal challenge against the provincial government. The court ruled in favour of the students, declaring that the Student Choice Initiative violates the autonomy of Ontario universities. The government has yet to take action on the verdict, however, it is possible that the decision could be appealed in the near future. Now for our second story, we have some unfortunate news. The Queen's Journal has reported that 14 Queen's students on exchange have been forced to flee Hong Kong as a result of the ongoing protests. After being triggered by the introduction of the Fugitive Offenders Amendment Bill, the protests have resulted in more than 1,000 people being arrested, hundreds injured and 11 people killed. There were 15 Queen students on exchange in Hong Kong, and all of them except for one have managed to return safely back to Canada. However, it has been reported that the remaining student has extended family in the region and feels safe enough to remain there. The university is promising to maintain communication with this student to ensure that they remain safe. Our university isn't the only one to be affected by these protests. A recent report from the CBC said that a Western student, York University students and University of Toronto students have been urged to come back home following the initiation of these protests. That's all the news that we have for you this week. We here at Queen's Television wish you all the best on your final days of the semester. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at QueensUTV and like and share on Facebook. See you guys next week.